minutes to go. Kevin Johnson will inbound. Oliver Miller plays it. Here's Johnson. Johnson gets no, he could not get it off. Knocked away by Grant. It's all over. The Chicago Bulls have made it three straight NBA championships. A three-point shot by John Paxson, the game winner. The Bulls with a record low, only 12 points. In the fourth quarter, that is a NBA Finals record low, but it was enough. Michael Jordan, when that buzzer went off, first jumped so high, but immediately had the presence to chase the basketball down into the crowd. Whoever had picked it up, he wanted that basketball, signifying the third world championship in a row, and he went after it and got it. The 1992-1993 season was going to be Michael's last, and although the Bulls had an average season, MJ did what he did best, and he led the team to a third straight title while wearing the Air Jordan 8. This was MJ's 8th signature shoe and the 6th which was designed by Tinker Hatfield. The design for the time was different than any other Jordan before it. It was a heavy shoe, a little clunky, it featured a cross strap that went over the laces, the fuzzy strange logo on the tongue, and what some thought were strange colors on the side paneling. The sneaker was different and the commercials were just as strange for the time. Across the universe people are asking what fiend would steal Air Jordans? Goody, more Air Jordans for me. Pebble Beach. This is no way for a pamper superstar to travel. What the? Shoes. And they're all mine. Give me you those Air Jordans. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes, no. Take these or else. Saved by a clever edit. A giant pencil with an equally giant eraser. I smell trouble. I smell popcorn. Red butter popcorn. You don't want much hot. You don't want much butter. Our heroes have made the world safe for truth, justice, and Mike's royalty tips from Nike. That's all, folks. That's my client's line. It says so in my uh, 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 deal. Cheese ball cake. Once everyone had some time to get used to the shoe and forget about that commercial, it went on to sell in great numbers and it's now one of the classic silhouettes in the Air Jordan lineup. Here's the history of the Air Jordan 8. The Air Jordan 8 released in 1993 and three original colorways were released. The Bulls Home, also known as the Bugs Bunnies, and the All Star 8s, aka Aquas, both released in February 93 which was then followed by the Playoff 8s in April. The retail price for the model back in 1993 was $125. If you were a fan of the 8, you would have to wait 10 years before Jordan retroed the model. The first shoe to drop that year was the OG Bulls Home colorway, which released on March 1st. On May 3rd, 2003, we got the first Retro Plus colorway of the shoe, which was the Air Jordan 8 Chrome. But Jordan brand wasn't done. They went on to release the 8 in a low top form and brought us the Air Jordan 8 Low Chrome on June 21st and the Air Jordan 8 Low Playoff on August 23rd. Price for the highs increased to $135 and the lows were available for $110. 2007 was a big year for the model and Jordan brand went on to drop 8 pairs of 8s. On September 22nd, the OG Air Jordan 8 All-Star, aka Aquas, retroed for the first time, but a woman's Aqua 8 was also released on the same date, and both pairs were $140. The very next week, a new Retro Plus lifestyle colorway released, and that was the Peapod 8, or as some called them, the Chicago Bears 8s. And for some strange reason, the price of these increased to $150. But Jordan brand wasn't done. On October 20th, two more pairs released. The first were the Bobcat 8s for men, and the second were Ice Blue women's pair, which both retailed for $140. Fast forward three weeks later, and another pair dropped. This was another Retro Plus colorway, the Air Jordan 8 Anthracite. On December 22nd, we got our next OG colorway when the playoffs released. This pair was accompanied by another women's exclusive, the Air Jordan Retro 8 Low Cinder. The highs were $140, the lows were $110, and that leather looks incredible. If you managed to get your hands on these next two pairs when they dropped on February 13th, 2008, you're smiling now. The Ray Allen, aka Sugar Ray, and Quentin Richardson Q Rich models released at House of Hoops in New York, and this marked the very first time the regular public would be able to purchase a Jordan PE model. 
The release went unannounced and it somehow managed to stay off the radar of sneaker blogs and websites. Pairs of the Q-Rich are currently available for $2,500 and up. But those weren't the only two pairs to release. 2008 also brought us the Air Jordan 8 Bugs Bunny as part of the CDP pack on November 15th for $310. 2013 up next and we get three pairs of 8s. Two in OG colorways and a Retro Plus. The first pair to release were the Bugs Bunny 8s which dropped on April 20th which were then followed by the Suns. This Retro Plus colorway was dropped to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the 93 title we saw at the beginning of this video and they released May 18th. The last pair to release in 2013 were the Playoffs and they dropped on June 29th. Retail in 2013 was $160. 2014 just saw one pair of 8s release and they were the Dornbeckers. If you haven't yet seen my history of the Dornbecker collection, then check it out for more info, but this pair released November 23rd for $180. Just last year in 2015, we saw three pairs of the Air Jordan 8s release. The first pair to drop were inspired by the 3 Pete, and they were called the 3 Times a Charm or the 3 Pete Aids. And the colors on the shoe were to represent the colors of the teams that the Bulls crushed on their way to the title, and they released on October 24th. On November 27th, we would once again get a retro of the Air Jordan 8 Aquas. The Chrome 8s would follow and they would retro for the first time on December 19th and by 2015 retail had hit $190. And finally we reached 2016 and this year we had two pairs of 8s drop. Continuing with the championship cigar and champagne pack, Jordan Brand released the CNC 8s. Both pairs released on June 26th and if you wanted these for your collection, they cost $250 each. And that's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, and I hope you did, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe, join the squad. If you have something to say, leave it in the comments below. And I'm out!